Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA smoothie build. So in this video, I'm going to be covering the fuselage and the tail surfaces with the monocoat. And if you remember from my last video in this series, I covered the wing. And I took some time to, to do that video, I think it was around 50 minutes or so. And I went into a kind of a lot of detail and I showed a lot on that. I'm not gonna do the same thing for the fuselage because I think probably everybody's seen enough of the monocoat. So this video is gonna be sort of a little bit more streamlined. But I did wanna call your attention to a few things here before we start. All right, so the first thing is that off camera, I did, it, I did a few things here. Let me show you something that I did. And if you look up here in the front, right here, you can see I have a couple of, ma well, I, what I did is I put a couple magnets in there. And those are those powerful magnets. I got those at my local hardware store. They sell them in little sets different sizes. And the reason I put the magnets in there is because, let me pull this off, this is the hatch. So if you look at the hatch here, check out the hatch, you see that, of course, I have the dowel that, that plugs in back here into this, into this block. And then there's a screw that attaches the hatch on kind of right, right there, okay? And I'm a little worried that, you know, this is an OS 46 Max that I'm gonna be putting in here. And I was a little worried that because of the length, if you look at this, nothing's, nothing is attached to the, the hatch from here forward. And I was a little worried that the vibration from the engine, that the, the hatch would kind of like maybe do a little bit of like this, you know, when it's, when it's running. And I was hoping that I can minimize that. So what I did is I put those little magnets in there. If you can see here, it holds pretty well. Oh, there it goes. And those are really nice little magnets. And I just cut a little piece out here and I cut a little piece out here and I epoxied them in with five minute epoxy. So now when I put this guy on here, you can kind of hear it snap on. And hopefully with the screw, this will be nice and sturdy here. And then hopefully that'll sort of minimize or help maybe stop any kind of like um, possible vibration or kind of whacking kind of on, on the front here. So I did that. Okay, now the other thing I did off camera is I used the z epoxy, this epoxy resin. And this is the same stuff that I used for the fiberglass cloth on the wing. And I just mixed the batch and I painted, I kind of coated the inside of the engine compartment. Maybe kind of hard to see, you can kind of see it's a different color. I also kind of coated, you know, the, the exit areas for like the muffler right here and then the needle valve area right over here. And that's just to help protect the wood from kind of soaking up oil and fuel over time. So covering the fuselage is going to be a little more straightforward than covering the wing. It has, you know, it doesn't have too, too many curves on it. It has a little bit of curvature up here on top. It has obviously some curvature as we get toward the nose, but they're not really major, major curves like we had at the wingtip area for the, for the wings, obviously. We've got those compound curves on the wing, and that makes it a little bit difficult to use the Monaco. And the colors that I'm going to use, as I mentioned before, I'm going to use black for the hatch, the fuselage is going to be the orange, and then the tail surfaces are going to be the light blue to match the wing. Now, I do want to call your attention to one thing. So sometimes when you build these kits, you don't attach the tail surfaces until the end. Sometimes when you build them, you can, like for in this kit, you, you put them on kind of during the build like this, so now they're already attached before we cover. So it's not a huge issue, but it does make it a little more difficult to kind of cover where those surfaces sort of, like where the tail section parts kind of meet with the fuselage. If it was one color, it would be a little bit easier, but because I'm using the blue and the orange, I want to have a nice kind of straight line, obviously, between like the, the, the rudder and the horizontal stabilizer, and then of course the, the fuselage like that. Okay, so there's kind of two ways that I can kind of approach this, right? So one of them is I can cover the fuselage first, and I can kind of work in these, these kind of areas with the orange. And then of course overlap onto, we want to overlap onto, the, to, onto these surfaces because when you come back with this color, you want to make sure you don't have like any wood showing through. So that's one way to do it. I can kind of cover the fuselage and then come back with the, with, with the tail surfaces. Um, that way may be a little bit easier because I can, once I get the tail, once I get the orange on and it's overlapping onto these, onto these surfaces, I can just cut a nice piece of monaco with a straight like kind of with a straight edge to it and just place it right up against here and attach it and have a nice clean look. The other way to do it is the opposite is to go ahead and cover the tail surfaces first 
and then do the same thing and come back with the fuselage um, and cover it that way. I think what I'm going to do here, because I do have like overall, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to have cover everything orange, do the orange first and then come back and, and, and attach the blue or cover with the blue and hopefully come up with a nice clean contact between the two colors. And then one thing I did want to mention once again was that with Monocoat, um, it's a good idea or with covering, I should say in general, kind of start from the bottom and work your way up. Sort of like the same way you put like shingles on a house. You kind of start with the lower ones and you work your way up to the top. So, but in general, what I would do or what I am going to do is start on the bottom with the fuselage. I'll put the lower piece on and then I'll move to the sides and I'm going to overlap it, right? I'll overlap it. I'll do the sides and then I'll come up to the top. And then of course, the last thing is I will do the, the cockpit area. I'm just going to use black and I'll, and I'll make this black in here and I'm going to put black sort of on this headrest area. And then on top of that, obviously I have the actual canopy that I cut before and I'll come back and we'll attach the canopy later. Let me put this down. And then really quick, once again, I'm, I'm using Monocoat and as I mentioned in the last video, they give you this nice little sheet here, instruction sheet with some tips on it. So this pretty much has everything you need to know and is really good to keep this and the, read this whole thing. If you've never done monocode or covering before, read this whole thing and kind of teaches you how to do it also. Okay. Okay. So just to warm up, no pun intended, I'm going to go ahead and start with just this, just with the hatch here with the black. I'll do this one first and it'll get me kind of in the groove, hopefully. Let me pull this guy off of here. I'm gonna move this guy back out of the way. So let's get started. I'll just do this one. Of course, once again, you want to make sure your surfaces are nice and clean. There's no dust on them because you want the monocoat to stick to the wood, not the dust. And then real quick, I, I, real, I know that there's different many ways to skin the cat. So always check out other videos, learn from others. I think that's too hot. It was a little bit too hot. Let me let my iron cool off for a bit. Okay, so yeah, my iron was a little bit on the hot side there. Let me go ahead and get the edge attached on this side. And pull it tight on this side a little bit. All right, so I don't know if you picked that up during that kind of time lapse, but what happened was as I as I moved this way with the monocoat, I had it maybe a little bit off center a little bit, I guess, and I started getting a little bit, it started to shrink back a little bit on this edge. So all I did was I just cut a little strip, as you can see here, and I slid it underneath that piece, and then I went over it this way, and I just kind of patched it like that, and it's really, you know, it's no big deal, but that's kind of the nice thing about monocoat is you can, or the covering material like this, is that you can work with it like that and it's a little bit forgiving. Um, again, it's, this thing's actually got more of a curve to it than I kind of thought I'd had when I was looking at it. Um, it was a little bit difficult to kind of get it around these, these edges. Um, but anyhow, that's kind of the name of the game. So let me go ahead and trim this and we'll get it finished up.
All right, so there is the hatch. It was a little bit of a bugger trying to get it around some of these corners, but it turned out okay. There's the hole for the screw. I had to kind of cut that out and put the kind of push the iron down inside there. I actually used some just basically a well, I just used the black sharpie just to kind of color that wood in there black, and um, that kind of helps. So this the sharpies are kind of uh, good for that once in a while, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the rest of the plane.
All right, so I am finally finished with covering the fuselage with monocoat. So let's go ahead and put some of the parts on. So here's the hatch, obviously. Just stick that guy on there. That's that nice magnet snapping it on there. And then I haven't installed the canopy yet. That's gonna be another step. So yeah, it's gonna be looking, looking like that. Pretty cool. And then I'm gonna flip it over to this side so we can see the tail section oops there's the tail section and I went with black for the elevator and black for the rudder like that and the reason I did that is I actually ran out of blue <laughs> so um, I had black so I thought I would go ahead and just kind of carry the black to the back like this, so I think it'll look okay. So that's gonna be like this. Okay, so a couple things before I go off of this video is that no matter how hard I try, I always get some residue on, on the iron from the different colors, and some of that residue bleeds over and when you're getting in some of these tight areas and such, you can kind of, you know, you can get, when you get close to the edge of the monocoat, you can kind of squeeze out or push out some of that pigment and you'll get it residue on on the plane even if you use one of those socks you'll still get residue on the sock and that's just kind of the nature of the uh of the process in fact i just put some on right there and what i do is when i'm done kind of doing applying the monocoat i just use some acetone and I go around the whole plane and I just kind of take off any places that I have a little bit of um, residue left on the surface and I'll clean it up. And I'm always real careful when I use, um, when I use acetone. So you can go around, you kind of see, you can pick up some residue here and there. I should be wearing gloves, by the way. I shouldn't be doing that. So let me put this away. So I imagine everybody's probably had their fill of watching me put monocoat on this plane. I had two full videos of this. So thanks for hanging in there and watching that. My next video, I think I'm going to move on to putting on the landing gear. And I'm going to put the landing gear on the front and then the tail gear on in the back here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I have to, I have to get the tail gear lined up before I put the hinges in the rudder. So it's going to be the next step is going to be putting the putting the landing gear on and the tail gear, and then I'm going to start hinging the the different surfaces here. So that'll be an upcoming video. All right, so that's it for now. Again, thanks for watching my channel. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.